Muscle power testing for the upper body starts with testing for C1, which will be cervical flexion, placing the hand over the patient's forehead, asking them to hold their head in that position as we apply a resistance towards the table. C2 is cervical extension, so placing our hands underneath the occiput and asking our patient to resist into our hands, and we're trying to maintain that position. C3 is cervical lateral flexion, so we can test both the left side and the right side. C4 is shoulder elevation, so asking our patient to shrug their shoulders into about mid-range, and then we're applying a downward force, asking our patient to hold their shoulders in that position. C5 can be tested with shoulder abduction, and this can be applied either bilaterally or unilaterally, depending on the size of the patient and also the therapist. Demonstrated here is the unilateral application for the C5 myotome with shoulder abduction. C5 can also be tested using external rotation of the shoulder. So we take our patient's shoulder into mid-range of external rotation and we're asking them to maintain that position against our resistance. C6 can be tested with elbow flexion, asking our patient to maintain that position against our resistance. C7 is tested with elbow extension, once again, holding the same position against our resistance. C7 is also wrist flexion, moving our patient into a slight amount of wrist flexion, holding onto their fist, and we're trying to move them into extension, so they need to maintain wrist flexion. C8 is responsible for the finger flexors, so we'll get a bit of C7 and C8 here with wrist flexion and finger flexion. Here we are trying to hook over our patient's fingers and trying to uncurl their fingers from a clenched fist. Along with elbow flexion, wrist extension also tests the C6 nerve root so we're asking our patient to maintain wrist extension as we apply a force in the opposite direction. C8 can also be tested with thumb extension so we're trying to direct the movement through the interphalangeal joint. C8 can also be tested with ulnar deviation. So we take our patient's wrist into a slight amount of ulnar deviation and we're applying a force in the opposite direction, asking our patient to maintain that position. T1 supplies the intrinsics of the hand. So we're asking our patient to maintain about 90 degrees of flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joints. And we're asking them to squeeze their fingers together as we provide resistance by pulling away the fifth and the second phalange. So we're trying to provide that abduction force of the phalanges and we're asking our patient to squeeze their fingers together.